Why is election data overseas? Why is a non-U.S. company running U.S. elections overseas? Just the answers there alone invite all kinds of speculation. All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. And today, I know I should have covered this a few days ago when the, when the news broke about this uh, Dominion server on a CIA server farm in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, I put some feelers out there and I am not getting anyone coming back uh, at me with any uh, direct information. There's a lot of hearsay. Now, I, you can use hearsay in regards to painting pictures to make uh, judgments against. But in a court of law, hearsay is, you know, not, uh, not used. And for very good reason. So luckily, this is in evidence for a court of law. I'm just looking at this stuff uh, from my bird's eye view, using a little logic and reason and some uh, Intel analyst thinking <laughs> because holy shit, this is really going down a crazy rabbit hole. Now, number one, uh, this raid did take happen. Number two, servers were seized. Number three, this raid was done by the United States military against the CIA. Okay, now there's a whole bunch of questions here that we're going to have to ask because what the hell's going on? Ever wanted to see what would happen if Notorious B.I.G. and the Snuggles Bear went through the transporter from the fly? Well, here it is. If we had a crib and she'd be a bad host, trying to disappear, see, I'm a go ghost. Shameless Dab is a big fan of the show, and he's an even bigger fan of the Smash and Dash. Check out his newest music video by clicking on the link in the description, and maybe he'll introduce you to the hooker, <laughs> I mean, uh, stunning and brave models in his videos. Space Ghost. This was, in fact, a CIA installation. I don't know if it was a surfer farm, safe house, or an actual, uh, um, one of their business blocks that they maintain overseas. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to get the actual military unit that was used to uh, basically cord on and break in to said uh, installation uh, because that stuff needs to be done quickly uh, because those guys are really good at flipping switches and burning and destroying stuff. So why the hell was the CIA doing that? And okay, wh why was a Dominion server under their purview, under their control, within their sphere of influence. Why is that allowed to happen? There's a whole bunch of questions just from these two things that I believe we as the American people need answers to. That is so crazy that the only thing I could come up with is the alphabet agency, the CIA that we use, uh, to protect us from foreign powers is now using their influence inward and going after the U.S. citizens, which is completely unacceptable. And in my opinion, that is the shining beacon, beacon of light that there is an active coup going on against the President of the United States and the American people. All right, now, typically... When the U.S. military decides it's going to do anything, it will usually establish uh, security around said target to isolate it and then take steps to either neutralize, destroy, attack, breach. Uh, but since they're, they're going for evidence, I would say they breached. Again, this is going to ask even more questions like, why is election data overseas? Why is a non-U.S. company running U.S. elections overseas? 
just the answers there alone invite all kinds of speculation. In regards to the Dominion and what, they're, what they do, you know, apparently they, uh, they're used to tabulate votes and track data and so forth. That company was not certified to work within Texas because Texas tested the software and found it unreliable, non-secure, and uh, there was a lot of, how shall we say, iffy systems within that software that uh, the state of Texas did not agree with. I know friends of mine who run banking software and other software used to uh, figure out uh, terms of loans and, and so forth. Now, I'm going to just say this right now. There is no original sources of code out there. Okay, almost all of the software that you have running on whatever device you're watching this on is either taken from old software or it is taken from old software and tweaked to work on the platform you're viewing this on. And the same goes for said Dominion software. There are aspects within this particular software that were used in several elections down in South America to ensure victory for said dictators and so forth to include Cuba and Venezuela. Now, here's another question is how long was the CIA, CIA server under observation? Number one. Number two, how many other said servers are under observation by the United States government? Uh, because that is a huge, huge picture in this whole mosaic of craziness that we have going on. Okay, now, when you're observing the CIA server, you're seeing what's going in and out. There are logs of that, and there are, there's data of that somewhere, because very rarely do you have uh, one computer talking across half the globe to a server with a direct link. There's always nodes in between, and each node is basically a vulnerability that can be hacked or observed. The data between all these different nodes could be highly encrypted, but to be honest, if it's a CIA server, those encryption keys are known. And I don't think that um, even if we didn't know our own encryption keys, we wouldn't have the ability to basically crack that stuff <laughs> in no time flat. Like I said here, are there more servers? I don't know. I can't get anyone to go on the record. I can't even get anyone to tell me uh, who has any direct knowledge of this craziness that went on. Okay. I would never ask anyone to violate OBSEC on my behalf, especially if they're in the know. I don't want anyone to get in trouble. But typically, those individuals have basically information that they can point you to, which is not OBSEC, which you can make a basically a deduction from. I have not received any of that. Okay, so I am basically out there flapping like everyone out, out there is. Now, we already talked about aspects of the programming, you know, used in elections in South America, i.e. Uh, Venezuela, Cuba, and a few other ones. Uh, because if you have these evil dictators out there doing evil dictator stuff, how the hell are they getting reelected time and time again? Well, now we know. Now we know. That's, going, that's actually happening here in America. We need to dig a hole in somebody's ass and get this whole thing unfucked pretty damn quick. I've looked at some of, uh, of the videos from individuals who do statistical analysis. Yeah, my college degree, I have a minor in statistical analysis and statistics. So when they're talking about uh, 
you know, random numbers and how random numbers fall on a particular graph. People have been studying this for decades, if I wouldn't say probably a century. And truly random numbers show up on a graph a certain way. Random numbers don't show up on a graph in straight lines, either horizontal or, or perpendicular or at diagonals. It just, it just doesn't happen. And I looked at some of these videos and you can actually see in some, especially in the swing states where Trump was crazy ahead. And then all of a sudden, you know, he wasn't and it, usually, it, I think it took place after 11 o'clock at night on election night. And, um, some of the explanation is, you know, Hey, you know, they were mail-in ballots that somehow were 100% for Biden, which happened to show up at the, you know, beyond the witching hour to turn the election against Trump. And there are also glare, glaring data anomalies where uh, votes were switched for Biden flat out. Now, statistically speaking, that just is... That doesn't fly with me, nor anyone with two brain cells to rub together. That there is definitely some craziness going on, and the fix is in. You know, I've heard stories in regards to watermarks on ballots. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know what's going on with the da data from the server that was seized, or the encrypted data to the server from other servers that were prob probably downloaded or and or seized as well. Uh, I would assume if there was any usable data on there, we are probably going to know about it pretty quickly. And I am guessing that when the big kahuna lawsuit hits the Supreme Court, that data will be included in that case. Now, I don't know why they are not releasing it now. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it exists or not. I would assume that they're holding off on releasing it so the media doesn't have time to poke holes in it and so forth. I don't know. Uh, I am just making educated guesses. So, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. With the amount of corruption and voter craziness we're seeing, which, by the way, is mainly against Trump. There is barely any going against Biden. That we have now gone into the realm of impossibility for there to be any other explanation than a widespread voter fraud scheme that we, as the American people, are seeing unfold before our very eyes. And how the media is going right along with it. And I really don't see this working out in, uh, in anyone's benefit down the road. But how deep does this go? Okay, now I am betting if the CIA is involved in this and we have law enforcement individuals looking the other way and judges looking the other way that this is deep. And I believe this has really gone beyond the point of being repaired or fixed without massive external influences. What those are is up to you to determine. I'm just telling you that when it's this crazy, typically it doesn't get fixed until something radically changes. And normally that is done through... Force. Now, I hopefully I'm wrong and this doesn't come to pass. But let's be honest. We've all felt this coming for quite some time. Especially when you have 74 million people in this country who voted for President Trump, whose voices are being silenced and cast aside with absolutely no value. Now, typically when you have a large portion of the population who have no say in their government well it's not long after that they decide that 
Why would they support that government? I'm just saying. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But as a betting man and a student and a student of history, that's where I see this is going. From what I've been hearing, Biden has got another massive lockdown for the entire United States coming down the pipe. It started off nine months ago as two weeks to flatten the curve. Now where he's talking four to six weeks, some estimates are two months. Well, if it's eight months per two weeks of a lockdown, you're talking 18 to 24 months before we go back to business as usual. And that is somewhere in 2023. Now, I don't know too many people out there who can afford to earn no money and sit on their ass for two years. So, that could be a breaking point on top of the craziness with the election. That could be a catalyst for all kinds of craziness moving into the future. All right, now, another side note. The actor Ricky Schroeder came forward and ponied up the remaining cash needed to get the Wisconsin uh, Rittenhouse shooter out on bail. His bail was set at $2 million, which I think is ludicrously high for a 17-year-old kid with no past criminal record. I foresee him basically beating most, if not all, of the charges against him. Because I looked at those videos, and when you look at them... As a whole, you see the actions of an individual uh, acting in self-defense, not as a manslaughtering slash second degree murderer. But hey, stranger things have happened. This is America. Who knows? Anyway, this is my rundown on the information I have thus far on the Dominion servers and some of the craziness that's taking place in the media today. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, and if you haven't joined us on Parlor and MeWe, please do that immediately. And uh, we have a GoFundMe for upcoming legal expenses that I see our channels are probably going to incur. Uh, so please send us a couple bucks because lawyers are insanely expensive. And for the most part, the value that they bring to the table isn't worth that expense. But that is the system that we have to work with. So please help us out.